Hey everybody, back again. This is Susie Lolly, and if uh, you just joined us since yesterday, I'm so glad to have you doing a series of videos called Tech Mess, the 12 days specifically. And so every day I want to give you tech tips, and today I'm so excited to share about Breakout EDU. It has literally been one of the most amazing game changers for me in educational, just the world, not educational technology necessarily, but we can integrate technology into it. But in honor of Christmas, I want to start every day, instead of just talking technology, I want to start with some kind of Christmas as well. So I want to talk to you today about two ingredient fudge. Now I'm holding a can of Funfetti, which is not actually the frosting that I would recommend for this recipe, but I used the other kind making uh, fudge for some church people the other day. But let me talk to you about this amazing fudge. So you get a can, or you get a bag of chocolate chips. These are just Aldi brand. They don't have to be fancy. And if you'll put them on low on your stove, you've got to be continually watching because you want to stir, stir, stir until they're melted. If you're not brave enough to put them directly in a pot, then um, you can just get a double boiler, you know, put a glass bowl over top of some boiling water, do it that way. You can do it in the microwave. I'm a risk taker. So the whole container of chocolate chips, and I think it's about two cups if you were to measure it out. This is 12 ounces, okay? One that is melted and completely smooth, immediately remove it from the heat, and then not funfetti but chocolate frosting. Just take a whole can of chocolate frosting, stir it in with the melted chocolate chips, and you have fudge, y'all. It's so good. I pour mine into a greased um, little, maybe an eight by eight uh, container. Just make sure it's greased really well and let it set up for a couple hours, and you have fudge. I had, um, whenever you can get a grandma's recommendation or a grandma asking you for your fudge recipe, you know that you've really hit the jack. Pot. So I had a grandma ask me for my recipe, and I know that it, that's how good it is. If you want to get a little fancier, and I don't have these ingredients in here with me, but you can make four ingredient peanut butter fudge. I totally ripped this off of uh, Pinterest, so if you want to follow me over there, Susie Lolly, then you can find the real recipe. But this is about all it takes. You add two cups of sugar, and yes, that's two cups. Two cups of sugar to a saucepan with half a cup of milk. Bring it, you stir it all up to kind of get it blended, and then you bring it to a boil. When you start to see bubble, 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 put your timer on for two and a half minutes. Stir, stir, stir continuously. As soon as it's been boiling for exactly two and a half minutes, don't go over. I did that the other day, and it was not good. Two and a half minutes, pull it off the heat, add three quarters of a cup of peanut butter and a teaspoon of vanilla, and you have yourself some amazing peanut butter fudge. Now, I try not to feed my dad treats like that a lot, <laughs> but um, anyway, he loved it so much that I made him made him that a couple times while he was staying with us in the summer, so shout out to my dad, who's in Clewiston, Florida right now. But anyway, that's your little taste of Christmas. If you enjoyed that, then you might have missed yesterday's coffee punch, so make sure you go back and get that recipe as well. But now on to Techmas, which is why we're all here, and today we're talking about a topic about which I'm so passionate it's breakout EDU. And I do have a couple notes over here to the right, just because I get so excited, I don't wanna to forget to tell you anything. And so um, as I'm talking through, I'm just gonna kind of give you an introduction to breakout EDU, and then I wanna get into something really cool that you may not have done, which is how to create breakout EDU games for friends and family that could be an amazing, really special, heartfelt Christmas gift, and you could do them even this late in the game. I'm recording this on December 17th. You got time. You got seven days to go and make your friends a really fun Christmas gift. So let's talk about what Breakout EDU is. First of all, I want to know, show of hands, so that means, other way, leave me a comment to let me know uh, if you have ever been to an escape room. Uh, the, the escape room concept was introduced to me a few years ago. Our friend Jamie Ellis, I'm sure he will tune into the video and he can say hey over there in the comments. But Jamie Ellis was having a birthday, and for his birthday, uh, he and several friends paid to go get locked in a room. Doesn't that sound fun? Well, when you pay to go get locked in an escape room, it's usually zombie themed. There's a zombie on a chain. Every 10 minutes, his chain gets longer. That would freak me out. I don't think I could do that one. But they have them all kinds of things. There's an 80s escape room. You get the drift. But you're locked in a room, and you get clues. And those clues are spread out everywhere. You're almost like a forensic uh, expert or a detective or something. You're finding clues, and you see something, and you're like, what in the world is this? Oh, I think it goes with blah, blah, blah over there. And so you start to put clues together. And as you do, you're able to find keys and unlock the room. Well, because we can't lock students in a room, I can think of several reasons why we wouldn't lock especially high schoolers in a room if you get my drift. Then the alternative to that is breakout EDU. And I'm going to show you my box without hopefully knocking anything over. But breakout EDU 
used to come in a box like this. Now it comes in a nice plastic box, but I'm excited that I got in on the ground floor when these were lovingly made by the founder's father in his garage, I do believe. But Breakout EDU is a kit where it's your content at the center, but students are finding clues and solving puzzles. So if you're a math teacher, you're getting them to engage with math content for an extended period of time. If you're a science teacher, if you're a reading teacher, whatever it is, it's your content that they're engaging with by choice. And students are finding clues, solving puzzles, and instead of breaking out of the room, they're breaking into the box within a certain time period. It's usually 45 minutes, and when you get more into breakout EDU, you can find all kinds of pre-made games, and uh, each game comes with a recommended time limit, but a lot of them are 45 minutes. The rules that I usually share with my students at the beginning of the game are these, and guess what? I'm gonna give you this whole orientation that I'm sharing right now. You're gonna have two hints throughout the game. I'm gonna show you my hint cards when I give you a tour of my kit, but you're gonna use your two hints wisely. So if students know that they only get two hints, I don't let them ask for a clue within the first 10 minutes. I want to know they've really persisted and thought and done some, you know, some teamwork. And so I give them two clues. Now, a lot of my teams though will try to be tough and they're like, I'm not gonna ask for any clues. If it gets to the last few minutes of the game, and they haven't broken very many locks at all, then I say, hey guys, don't you remember you have a couple clues? So two clues are included in the game and there's no penalty for using those. But their goal is to beat the clock and to think. And the whole team has to win, so I remind my students that they need to divide and conquer. Everybody shouldn't be gathered around the same puzzle watching two kids work on it. Instead, spreading around the room, finding different things to work on. And then, true story, whenever I do this with students, I always have one kid who cries and one kid who wanders. You have a kid who is used to getting straight A's. A lot of times, honestly, it's one of my gifted students, and they're used to getting a gold star, and I can do everything, and you know, I always know how to fill out this worksheet with complete accuracy, and they're so used to being successful at everything that it frustrates them that Breakout EDU involves some stepping back and some thinking and some putting together clues. That really stresses them out. So you're gonna have a kid that just says, I can't do this, and starts to cry. So whether it's you playing or making this for your friends or whether your students are playing, make sure you don't let them be the crying kid. The second personality type that can be disrupted to this game is the wandering kid. The first time I ever played, it was with a group of third graders and I had one kid who just kept walking around the room and he goes, seven minutes, not contributing anything except to annoy the other kids by reminding them how much time. You do need a timekeeper, but we're reminding students or adults, don't make that your only function. You can do this, okay? So logistics, what do I recommend? I always tell students, and you would tell this as we're talking about making Christmas games, tell your, um, your friends, your family, whoever's gonna play this game to study the locks first. I think of it just like a multiple choice test. If I know that these are my options, then I'm maybe gonna make a better educated guess. So if I know that I have a four digit lock and a three digit lock and a key lock, and I'm studying this puzzle that starts to mention the location of the key, I think, oh, Maybe this puzzle, when I find it, will help me find the key lock. So just reminding people who are playing to put those two things together. Study what you're gonna do before you finish it. Also, I use what's called a lock parking lot. I'll show you that in just a minute. But it keeps kids from fiddling with the locks or adults. You know, we get hyper and we're just sitting there clicking, which could cause your locks to get broken. And I don't want you to have any broken locks. So you just wanna make sure that when students are done completing any locks, that they, um, that they put their locks open in the lock parking lot. That also will give you time to go back and reset the lock before another group if, that, if you're gonna be playing it in class. I would recommend that students uh, in groups have a timekeeper and a recorder. So I said not just timekeeping, but make sure that they have a, a timekeeper that's involved. And then also someone who writes things down. Hey Candace, glad to have you. Um, you know, I usually put a little pack of sticky notes. Kids love, because they can't, they're not teachers. They don't, they get this huge thrill out of writing on the whiteboard or writing on sticky notes. So I just usually uh, put a little pack of sticky notes or you could use a whiteboard. Put that at each station if you're gonna have your students in groups and have them write down what, um, you know, locks they've tried. That way, if I'm kid number three that's approached this puzzle, sometimes you'll notice kids get frustrated. They walk away from a puzzle or adults, if that's who you're making this for, that's totally fine. I want the next group that comes around to know what I've already tried so we're not wasting time. And then um, if you're gonna use digital locks, just giving them 
down to us, like how, you know, it's supposed to be lowercase letters or uppercase letters for the locks. And so I could get into so much more about Breakout EDU. Actually, I teach a two, two and a half hour workshop. If anyone here is tuned in from Fulton County, specifically Haynes Bridge Middle School, I went and did a workshop for their teachers. They said it was the best PD they had ever had. So if you're at a school that has not done Breakout EDU, and you want me to come on over, that is something that we could set up together. So um, it's a two and a half hour workshop, but that was just the briefest introduction to the game itself. I now want to show you my kit. So give me just a minute. I'm going to close that out. And again, here's my kit. I love wood. Y'all, I'm so nerdy. If I, if I weren't a teacher, I would either be in marketing or I would work in a hardware store because I love the smell of wood. I know that's ridiculous. Now this box, though it's small, it's mighty in the words of Shakespeare. So I want to show you kind of like how Mary Poppins just keeps pulling things out of her bag. I want to show you everything that fits in this Breakout EDU kit. Okay. Some of these things come with the kit and some I've added, so I'll try to designate that. The old fashioned kit came with a directional lock that students had to click a certain way. The problem is that kids kept breaking it. So it comes with a new directional lock now. It's actually called the multi-lock, and let me show you that. It comes with this one lock, but then it comes with different sets of wheels. Like right now, the letter wheels are on there, but it also comes with like shape wheels. You can see the shapes there. It comes with color wheels. And what's this one? These are number wheels. So I love that it's called the multi-lock and it has several different settings you can put it in. So if your puzzle requires shapes, you've got them or numbers or whatever. And there's no crazy clicking to reset. Although I'm still attached to this one. Like I said, I got in on breakout EDU on the ground floor. So um, I'm still attached to that. I've added some other things along the way. Um, I, want, I went to an escape classroom. And so I've just won different locks, but the Dollar Tree is a great way if you want to enhance your kit, get more key locks. They have bicycle locks, just different things you can add. Get those at the Dollar Tree. But speaking more about the kit, and I'm unpacking here like Mary Poppins, the kit also comes with these two items that work together. You have an invisible ink pen. And this can be used to, you know, write a hidden code. This is probably the kid's favorite thing, and it costs a dollar. If you have a book fair coming to your, to your school, I would recommend buying a few extra of these. But um, the one that comes with the kit also functions as a flashlight. So it's also a UV flashlight, but the kit comes as well with a big UV flashlight, okay? Sometimes teachers will hide the batteries separate. They'll hide the pen. You have so many clues, and again, this would be like a two and a half hour workshop, so you're not going to see everything um, that I would do with these, but I just want you to see what comes with the kit. So those can work in tandem. What else comes with the kit? A hasp. Y'all had never heard of a hasp before I heard of this, but it basically allows you to, when you close it, you can lock multiple locks on this one thing, okay? So when you're locking your box, you could have up to six locks actually locked on the box, okay? Again, this is the, the word lock that used to come with the kit, but I just showed you the multi-lock. So I've got the hasp. Comes with a combination lock of some kind. This is the four-digit combination. It usually comes with this and also a three-digit lock box. Now I'm gonna tell you the truth. I had some teachers, when I mentioned Haynes Bridge a few minutes ago, I had some teachers who used my lock box and they jammed it. So what I've been doing since then is just taking a plastic zipper pouch I got this again at my favorite place, the Dollar Tree, and I've been folding it. Let me, this one folds a little bit better. I've been folding it so that the zipper can hook on up here, and I've just been using a three-digit lock to hook these two things together. So you can use materials that you have. You can use materials that come with a kit to create your own. But then I've enhanced it in some ways that I think are good. For example, if you're going to use a shared box, I have this thing called the Lock Maintenance Sheet. Okay, and the lock maintenance sheet allows teachers who might be using your box to list what game they played and what all the combinations were. That helps them and you to reset the locks should anything get stuck and you can't remember what game was going there. I also have lock reset materials all stored, again, in the Dollar Tree Ziploc pouch, So, um, as well as my hint cards. Forgot to show you those. But the kit does come with a couple hint cards. You can also print those from the website. And students just turn those in when they're ready to, um, to use a hint. But I took all of my lock reset materials, labeled them, laminated them, and stored them in a kit. Because, again, I'm using a shared box, and I pass these around. The last thing, or no, two more things. 
that come in my kit. You can print this again from Breakout EDU. It's the lock parking lot. I talked a few minutes ago about how kids are fidgety and so are adults. So if you're going to make, be making a gift with a Breakout EDU kit, give them a place to park the locks unlocked when they're done. So if they've solved the directional lock or the key lock or whatever it is, I'm having a hard time pointing the opposite way, um, then you know, this gives them a place to put it where you can reset it and you know they're not going to break it by continually fidgeting, okay? And then finally, you only can access the winner signs if you break into the box. So the loser signs I keep out because if they don't break in, I want to make them hold up things like, we almost did it. But if they break in, they get fun signs like this. And I, you can find these all over the Facebook group, but also um, Breakout EDU provides a kit for this. So when you go to Breakout EDU, um, you can buy a kit, you can find out more about the games. But here is what I'm here to talk to you about today. And I'm going to put this box on the floor. Today, we're here to talk about how if you're last minute or you just want to be really creative with your Christmas present, you can make some gifts for friends or family that um, are going to build teamwork, are going to let them know you really thought about them, and involve Breakout EDU. So you ready to get started? I am going to pop a couple links over here in the chat. The first one is going to be a link to the orientation that I just did with you live, the quick version of it. This is a Breakout um, teacher orientation. So if you are someone who's new to Breakout EDU, you can go to that mix link and it will um, walk you through um, exactly what I just did as far as how the game works, what rules you should share with, share with your students, what the kit comes with and all of that, okay? But now I wanna dive into a couple of games that I have created for friends. And so this first one is called Friends Breakout. I was really creative with this. We were having a girls night and I thought, you know what, we're gonna do a devotion, but I wanna have a little bit of team building as well. So yesterday I learned that if I share my screen, then I can't come back and talk. It ends the video. <laughs> so if you want to follow along with me, then I'm going to give you just a minute to click the link that says Friends Breakout and go there with me. I'm meanwhile going to put that, pull that up on my screen so that um, we're on the same page and I can show you exactly what the game was about. So this game I created again for a group of friends and I wanted to make sure everybody that was going to be in the party had um, was mentioned in my game. So I'm going to start with the, the directions and I'm not going to go through every document that I've provided for you in this folder, but you can click through and see my different locks. But I'm going to go into the directions. I always make directions for myself as the teacher, okay? Um, I make myself a little chart that says what lock is it, what's the code to it, is it dependent on another lock, and then, okay, what's all the stuff I need to know about this lock? When you build a game on Breakout EDU, they give you a better sheet than this. I just have a four column simplified view when I'm making games uh, for myself or for friends, okay? So for example, I had a treasure map, or I had a map clue, and um, I had two friends' names hidden in that on the back. Let me pull up, I'm gonna pull up that map clue, and I'm just gonna talk you through a couple, because again, you can click this lock, you can see everybody, all the games that I'm talking about. So on the map clue, I just made a really simple map. I have little house icons and it has different people's names on them. And this is my directions lock. And I said, I get home at 530, exhausted but needing friendship love. I drive to Heather's house because she's so sweet. Then I go back home. And I realize I need a makeover. I make over. Who's my girl, Megan? I get in the car and go see her. Beautiful now, I head back home. The teachers or the friends who were playing this game, I kept saying I go back home because I wanted them to go to my house and then go to another direction. And this was their directional lock, okay? So I just embedded all their names in different puzzles like the map lock or for the key, I made a puzzle that's, that was a word search. And when they found all the words in the word search, they were left with a secret message which says, Susie hid the key behind such and such. So if you want to just click through the puzzles, I hope you'll get inspiration for how you can make those for a friend. And now I want to get to my bad mamma jamma of games, y'all. I was really proud of myself. If Jamie, my brother, I have lots of Jamies in my life. If Jamie, my brother, is watching this, which I'm sure he will at some point, uh, he had a birthday and he turned 30 this past year. And I thought, I love the game Clue. I had just bought a new Clue set. And the Goodwill is your secret for this. They All their games there are $1.91, all their board games. And so I bought all kinds of games there. Um, and so I had just bought two versions of Clue, actually, because I really love Clue and I've never owned it. 
And so I had all these clue cards in there and I had the ultimate brainstorm. I said, oh my gosh, what if I took my love of clue plus breakout EDU and I made Jamie the ultimate 30-year-old um, breakout EDU game. So I'm popping that link in the chat right now. And I'm going to give it a title so that you and I can both find what it is again. Here I go. Here I go. Here I go. Here I go again. A little shout out to Salt and Pepper there. Okay. So I'm posting a link for you here. It's called Jamie B Day. And when you go to that link, you will see Jamie's amazing game. But let me tell you basically how it worked. I mailed Jamie. Here's one that's already filled out. I mailed Jamie a clue card. Now, the, the funny thing is about this game, I never knew it, and he never knew because I didn't ask him about it, but his clue card fell out before it ever got to him. I had forgotten to put it in there, and I kind of shoved it in the envelope once it was already sealed. That was a bad idea, um, but it, the game was supposed to work like this. He had a clue card, and in order to claim his prize on his birthday, because I started mailing these like two weeks ahead, um, he would have to solve different puzzles. Each puzzle that he solved would give him a friend's name. When he called that friend, they would tell him what to mark off of his clue card. So I had prearranged these with all his friends. For example, my husband. Um, when it was my husband's turn to be called, he was to tell Jamie to mark off the hall and the revolver and Mrs. Peacock or something like that. So he was able to mark off suspects by solving puzzles. And so let me just talk you through a couple of the puzzles that I did. And if you'll click the link, you can follow along with me. So let's go into, for example, clue number two. I'm going to pick that one because it's all in one page and it'll be easy for me to talk about. Clue number two, here it comes. It says, I hope they don't secret. If they do, I will be sent from the mansion with a noose around my neck. That Mr. Body just couldn't keep his mouth shut. How could I have kept it from the whole world and had him reveal it? How did he know all these people anyway? Body must have been his pseudonym as well. And then I give him these weird series of numbers, like 1-7-3. What I was telling him was, look at the first sentence, look at the seventh word, look at the third letter, okay? This one was challenging. It just came with this one piece of paper. And again, what's frustrating about Breakout EDU is you're not telling the person exactly what, you know, they can look for. You just send them a piece of paper. No directions, no clue, unless they use one of their hint cards. And so when I sent this to Jamie, he had to look at it and he had to figure out what in the world the numbers were at the bottom. So as he started to find first sentence, seventh, uh, seventh word, third letter, he would start to spell out a message. Another clue I gave him was a, let me find another one that's one page, clue number six. Clue number six was fun. It was hieroglyphics. Now, with the hieroglyphics, I gave him a site that he could go look at. I also gave him a place where he could record what he found out. So this one, um, I know it, it spelled out something about Cartersville friend. Well, we have one guy friend that lives in Cartersville. That was Josh. So once he, it said Cartersville dweller. That's what it said. So when he was able to solve this, he found that it was somebody who lived in Cartersville. He could text Josh, and Josh would give him its clue. So all of that, he solved over a two-week period, and when he was done, uh, he was able to claim his gift, which was a rocket book. If you've never seen a rocket book, that is worth putting in the list right here. So I'm going to um, post that link right here. It is a microwavable notebook. You're going to think this is so crazy if you've never seen it. But it's a microwavable notebook, and when you're done writing in it, you microwave it, and it comes clean. Is that not the craziest thing you ever heard? When I first saw it, I thought, oh, my gosh. It was almost as groundbreaking as Breakout EDU was when I saw it. So I'm sharing with you Get Rocket Book just as a bonus tip. But the Rocket Book um, allows you to save physical notes. Because I don't know about you, but I like writing in a notebook. But it allows you to save physical notebooks to the cloud. You can send them to your OneNote, your OneDrive, your Google Drive, wherever. And then when you're done using up the whole notebook, you're able to microwave it and, and get it clean. So, so amazing. And that was his result if he showed me his completed clue card. Now, obviously, he lost the card or the mail did or something, but he was able to tell me the answer, and then I was able to give him his notebook. So I hope that all of this, I know it's been fast talking, and I couldn't screen share with you, which makes me sad, but if you'll click on any of these links that way, <laughs> I'm going to learn how to point the right direction. If you'll click on any of the links over here, you're going to see how to play the game, my friendship game, and also um, my Jamie birthday game, and I hope all of that inspires you. You know what I would really love? If you would tweet me at Suzy Lolly, and that's S-U-Z-Y-L-O-L-L-E-Y, I'll actually post it over here in the comments. 
if you will tweet me and share your game with me, I would love to see pictures and how it makes your, uh, your friends and family happy. So that's it for day two of Techmas. If you love the video, will you please share it? I would love to hit 100 likes this week. Right now we're about at about 75. So thanks again for tuning in, and I hope it's been a great day for you.